Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well. My name is Jacob and in this video, we're going to continue learning about making API requests inside of Bubble. Um, in particular, we're going to look at connecting with the Spotify API and in the process, we'll learn all about OAuth 2. What is OAuth 2? It's a standard for authentication. Um, we'll look at the definition and, and talk about what it is, but I think it's uh, it's one of the trickiest authentication methods that you'll run into when dealing with APIs. And we're going to, like we have done all along, we're going to try to understand it from the ground up. So if that sounds good, if OAuth 2 APIs in general, um, if, this, if this is something that you struggle with, and if you're enjoying this series and excited about this content, make sure to show me some love, give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe and do all of those things that YouTube likes you to do. Okay, so here we are inside of the bubble editor. Let's just talk about what the goal is and, and start with the problem first. On the page right here, all I've done is I've created a new page called Spotify. And all that there is on this page is just a bubble group that we will attach a workflow to later. So this is just a group with an icon and a text element inside of it. There are no workflows right now, but the idea is that a user is going to come to this page of our application here. They're going to click on connect with Spotify, which will allow them to connect their Spotify account to our app. And we're going to get a list of their followed artists on Spotify. Okay, so let's start with the documentation. As always, we'll go to the Spotify documentation. Now I've spent quite a bit of time already digging through this, so I'm going to kind of jump around, but it's not like I, uh, it's not like I have any magical abilities to know where all of the stuff that I'm looking for is before this video in preparation for this video. Uh, I just kind of, you know, dove through the documentation and spent quite a bit of time trying to find out uh, different ways of well, what Spotify wants us to do as developers in order to integrate with their API. So this user's endpoint here, if we scroll down, we have an endpoint that we are going to connect to later called get followed artists. Here's the URL. Um, it looks like there's a parameter called type here and we have to send an authorization header too. Now in the documentation here, this authorization header is blank. So we need to figure out, okay, well, where are we going to get this, this code from? Now, if you spend some more time, I mean, there's a hint right here actually, uh, where Spotify recommends OAuth 2.0. If we click on this, um, or if we go to guides up here and go to their authorization guide, they'll tell us all about how we can um, integrate with their API. Now, if you want to go and read through this, you can. What we're going to do in a second is we're going to go through their authorization code flow. But first, let's just talk about what OAuth 2 is and look at what we're going to do from a bird's eye view. So if you go to Google and search what is OAuth 2, one of the first definitions you'll find is this one right here from Auth0. And it says OAuth 2, which stands for Open Authorization, is a standard designed to allow a website or application to access resources hosted by other web apps on behalf of a user. And if we think about what we're trying to do in our example, this definition starts to make a lot of sense. So we have a user that's going to come to our application and see a button that's going to allow them to connect their Spotify account. Now, in this example, we happen to be integrating with Spotify, but all of us have probably been in this situation before, whether it's logging into an app with Google or Facebook or LinkedIn, or whether it's connecting our Stripe account, it's the same idea here. So if we think about this from a user's perspective, what would we expect to happen next? Well, the user is going to click connect with Spotify, and our application is going to redirect this user to Spotify in this case. Now, Spotify is going to ask this user, hey, are you sure you want to let this application access your data? Now, the user is going to say, yes, that's OK, or no, that's not OK. But presuming they say yes and they authorize our app to access parts of their data, Spotify is going to redirect this user back to our application and what they're going to do is they're going to pass an authorization code inside of the URL. Now, this authorization code is going to be short lived, so it'll expire pretty quickly. And our application, the next step is going to be to take this authorization code 
to send it back to Spotify in another API request and to exchange that code for a token, for an access token. Now, this token is going to be tied to our user, and it's what we're going to pass in subsequent API requests if, for example, we want to access that user's list of followed artists, resources that belong to that user uh, on their Spotify account. Now, this flow here, obviously, we're learning about this in the context of Spotify, but you're going to see this exchange happening over and over again with different variations, of course, uh, for different APIs. So whether it's Facebook, Google, this kind of exchange where we're redirecting the user to that third party, getting them to authorize our application, and then having that exchange of codes and tokens, that's what you're going to see over and over again um, with slight variations, of course. One more thing I want to mention here is that we're going to set this integration up manually, but you can and should, if possible, use Bubble's built-in authentication methods inside of the API connector. The reason we're going to set this up manually is because I think it's a better way to learn about OAuth2 and also to learn about what Bubble's API connector and some of the built-in authentication methods that exist there are doing for us as developers behind the scenes. So without further ado, let's get back to the video. The authorization code flow is suitable for long running applications where the user grants permission only once. This diagram right here is another version kind of of um, the diagram that I just drew out for you guys. But you can see that is quite a complex dance with, with quite a few steps. But let's start from the beginning. So this guide assumes that you have created an app following the app settings guide here. Now this is exactly what we have done previously, where we're creating a developer app on Spotify's servers. So I have done that right here. I created an app called Bubble API Demo. They gave me a client ID, a client secret, and step one here is complete. Okay, so the first step is to make a GET request to the authorize endpoint with the following parameters down here. Now, when I was preparing this video, I actually screwed this up and I was making a request to the wrong endpoint here. I found that Spotify's documentation, at least for me, when I was reading through, it wasn't obvious what this actual authorized endpoint is, what the full URL is. I did some digging and, and found it and I wrote it down and copied it. So let me just put it inside of a text element here, just for reference. That's where we're going to make this get request to. And we're going to when the user clicks on this group right here, let's call this group connect Spotify. I'm gonna say start edit workflow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say navigation. Uh, let's just say open an external website. And we'll paste in our website right here. And now let's just start adding some of those parameters. So if we go back here, we need to add a few of these are required. So client ID, you can see it says required, response type, and redirect URI. We'll talk about these in a second, but let's just start adding in some of these parameters. So I'm gonna start my query string here with a question mark. We'll say client underscore ID equals now, I did already set up this application, so my client ID is right over here. So let's paste that in. Next, we have the response type. Set that equal to code, as it says. Set to code, okay. And then we have this redirect URI here. The URI to redirect to after the user grants or denies permission. This URI needs to have been entered in the redirect URI allow list that you specified when you registered your application. This is a very common part of this, uh, this whole dance. Inside of my developer's account here, if I edit settings, I have this redirect URI section here. Now, how did I know this was here? I mean, I think they tell us right over here, if we click on this app settings guide, We can keep scrolling down and we see that redirect URI right here. And there's a little bit of information about that right over here. So what's important is that the domain 
that we enter here, the URL here, is the same one that we attach as a parameter. So I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to say that we have another parameter here called redirect URI. We'll set that equal to that value. And then let's go back and look at some of these other parameters. State. Optional, but strongly recommended. This provides protection against attacks such as cross-site request forgery. Okay, so I'm going to leave this out for the sake of this demo just because it's this video is going to be quite long. Um, what we could do if we wanted to, I mean, what is, what is state doing here? This is basically just a way of proving that the actual redirect is coming from Spotify and not some malicious uh, third party. So we could include a state parameter and we could set it to some sort of random string that we generate. Uh, we There are a number of ways of th that we could do this if we did want to set this up manually, this whole process ourselves. Um, a lot of the stuff that we're doing here, we'll get to this at the end, but Bubbles API connector will actually take care of a lot of the stuff for us. But anyways, we'll get to that at the end. Um, for now, we're going to skip this state parameter. Um, and let's go to scope, a space separated list of scopes. If no scopes are provided are specified, authorization will be granted only to access publicly available information, only information normally visible in the Spotify desktop, web and mobile players. Now, I think that we do need scope for what we're trying to do. I'm just going to open this in a new tab. And the scope that we'll need is going to be for follow here. And it's going to be user follow read. Read access to the list of artists and other users that the user follows. So we can get a user's followed artists if we have this permission. So what we're going to do, like their documentation says, is we're going to include a space separated list of scopes. Now, we only need one scope for this. So the scope that we need is going to be, let's close this here, user follow read. So we'll say, and scope equals user follow read. Okay. And let's add one more for show dialogue. Now we, again, this is optional, but whether or not to force the user to approve the app again, if they've already done so, if false, a user who has already approved the application may automatically be redirected to the URI specified by redirect URI. Okay. Now I'm going to set this to true just because in preparation for this video, I've already gone through and set all of this stuff up. And I think if I set this to false or left it out because the default value is false for this parameter, um, Spotify wouldn't, I wouldn't be redirected first to Spotify's servers. They would just send me this authorization code back right away. And for the sake of this demo, I actually want to be redirected. So we'll say show dialogue equals true. Let's uh, true with not a capital T. Okay. So I think that looks good. Why don't we try this out and just see what happens? So I'm going to say connect with Spotify invalid client. It looks like when I copied over the client ID that there might be a little extra space there. Um, let's try to fix that. Yeah. And we'll try one more time. Okay, so that's what we would expect, right? Here's this authorization screen. I'm signed in already with Spotify. If I wasn't, they would ask me to sign into my Spotify account. Um, and we're going to agree to this. You can see there's list, there's information about what this application wants to do and what permission you're, you're giving this application. Let's click agree and let's see what happens. Okay, so from a user's perspective, I'm back on this application right where I left. But there is one thing different, right? If we look at the URL, look at what Spotify sent us back. We have this parameter called code. 
and it's equal to this long value right here. If the user accepts your request, then the user is redirected back to the application using the redirect URI passed on the authorized request described above. The callback contains two query parameters, code, which we just saw, and state. Now, we didn't pass state as a parameter in the first request, so state wasn't actually given back to us. But if we did pass state, the state that would be returned to us should match exactly what we passed to Spotify first. And they give us an example here. If the user does not accept your request or if an error has occurred, the response query string contains the following parameters, error, state, OK. OK. Now, the next step here is going to be to take this code that we're given and to exchange that for an access token. If the user accepted your request, then your app is ready to exchange the authorization code for an access token. You can do this by making a post request to the API token endpoint. The body of this post request must contain the following parameters encoded in application xwww form URL encoded. And we have these parameters here. If you are implementing the PK, PKCE extension, we're not. And then the request must include the following HTTP headers. Authorization, authorization, a base64 encoded string, OK, and content type. OK, so there's a lot that we have to do here. Let's go to the very top and set this up inside of the API connector. So for this, we are going to make a post request, and we're going to do that inside of the API connector. So we'll go to plugins. We're going to create Spotify here. Let's add another call. And what we'll do is we'll say exchange code for token. This is going to be a post request. We're going to use this as action. We'll see later. And the endpoint that we're going to make this request to, not show dialog, it's going to be same one as this, except it's going to be slash API slash token. OK. Now, let's go back to the documentation. The body of this post request must contain the following parameter encoded in application. OK. Now, what is this? I mean, if we type this into Google, what is application xwww form URL encoded describes form data that is sent in a single block in the HTTP message body. Okay, in the last video, we looked at sending information, sending data in the body of our request. If you missed any part of this series, by the way, I'll, I'll link to all of the previous videos below. Unlike the query part of the URL and a GET request, the length of data is unrestricted. Okay, in essence, it's all this is is us sending data in the way that the other server is expecting to receive it in. We can send data in a number of different ways, one of them being this application x www form URL encoded. The most common type that you'll see is application slash JSON, which we've seen before, but we're going to send it in a different way here. And if you read through the bubble forum, which is what I did when I first uh, encountered this and didn't know how to actually set this up inside of the API connector, you would eventually stumble on a post that would uh, show you how to do it. I don't think I have that loaded up right now. It's not important. We'll look at this together. There are a few different ways that we can do this, but the first thing that we want to do is we want to add a header here that says content type, let's say application, and I think we can just even, here we go content type, this is expected as a header parameter. And we're going to set the value to this right here. I think we could do lowercase too, and that would be fine. But content type, here we go. And the way that we can send this inside of the body in this format here is we can, instead of sending a JSON object, we can go and add these parameters in like this. So let's just say. We need the following request parameters added to the body. So we're going to say grant type equals the field must contain the value authorization code. OK, fair enough. And 
code equals. Now this code, as the documentation says, the authorization code returned from the previous request. Okay, so let's go to our request here and there's that code. Now, at the end of this video, we're gonna set all of this up so that this happens right when this user is redirected back to our page. But for now, while we're initiating all of these calls, oops, I, it's tough to do this, uh, this demo without a mouse. I'm just using my laptop for this, but let's copy that code there and paste it there. And then we're gonna say the last parameter here, this redirect URI, um, this is what we saw before, and this must match exactly the redirect URI that we passed when getting that original uh, code. So let's paste that in. The value for that is just going to be, whoops, let's go over here. Should just be this. OK, now the last part of this, there's one more thing that we need to do. If we try to initialize this call right now, we're going to get an error, and it's going to say invalid client. And the reason for that is because we haven't actually included this authorization header here, which is required, and it is a base64 encoded string that contains the client ID and client secret key. The field must have the format authorization basic, and then the base64 encoded client ID and client secret. Now, what is that? How do we know what to do here? Well, I mean, we could always do what we did before. We could say, we could go to Google and say, what is a base64 encoded string? We could go through and read all of this. A group of similar binary to text encoding schemes that represent binary data in, okay, I don't know about you, but reading this makes me more confused than, um, than I was when I landed on here. Um, when I first encountered this stuff, I just kind of went through the bubble forum, eventually figured it out. Um, and what we can do if we want to get a base64 encoded string, there's a really helpful website that we can use. Um, if you just type in base64 encoded string, I think it'll come up like first in Google. Let's just give that a try. Right here, which is the website I have loaded here. And what this will do is it'll actually base64 encode a string for you, okay? So if we look at the documentation here, we need to pass this authorization header with this keyword basic, and then the base64 encoded string of our client ID and client secret. So let's go to our bubble editor here. I'm going to add a header for authorization. And we're going to say basic. And now let's go actually take our client ID and client secret, both of which we're going to get from Spotify. And we're going to put them into this base64 encoder here, which I already did. But let's go through and do it together from scratch here. So we're going to go to our dashboard in Spotify. Let's grab our client ID. We'll paste it here. We have this colon here that we need to put in between our client ID and our client secret. So I'm going to do that. And then we'll, we'll, we'll grab our, our client secret right here. OK. And it looks like there's a space there. Let's get rid of that. And if I go to the bottom and just click on encode now, that is the base64 encoded string that I'm going to include after that basic keyword. So I'm going to copy that. We'll go over to bubble. And hopefully, if we've done everything right, and we initialize this call here, error description, invalid redirect URI, invalid grant, grant type equals authorization code, code equals and we forgot to actually put the, um, the actual name of the parameter here. So redirect URI equals that. Let's see if that works. Authorization code expired. OK, so those authorization codes that we're getting here, they, they can expire pretty quickly. Let's do this again. So we'll just get a new authorization code. 
So we'll say connect with Spotify. Yes, I agree. And there's this code that we're getting. So let's grab that and try that instead. And if we've done everything right, there we go. We see this nice, um, this nice pop-up that we're used to seeing when we have set up our, or when we've initialized the call and received a correct response. And if we look at this, there we go. We're getting this access token. The token type is a bearer token. We get a time when it expires. I'm pretty sure this is in seconds. And then we have a refresh token too that we can use to refresh this token once it does expire which is just going to be another API request to another endpoint to get a new token. And then the scope that's associated with this token. Okay, so, so far, so good. Let's click on save. And what we're going to do here now, at this point, usually once you receive that token, um, doing what you want to do after that is usually pretty easy. So what did we want to do? Of course, we wanted to get a list of this user's followed artists. So let's set up another call for this. At this point, we're just going to go back to the web API reference here. And we're going to go to users. Where is it here? Get followed artists. We're going to make a request to this endpoint, a get request. So let's add another call. Get followed artists. Um, let's use this as an action. Once we put this all together on the actual interface, we'll do that type equals artist. And I think this type equals artist, I read from the documentation that the currently only artist is supported. Perfect. So all we need to add in now is this header that we saw at the beginning of the video where authorization is equal to this value here. And that is going to be the token that we got back from that previous call. So if I look at the response we received here, this token hopefully is still valid. I'm just going to copy that. And we'll paste that in as a bearer token. Let's initialize the call. And it looks like we got back a successful response. Now, I personally myself am a am a YouTube music guy rather than a Spotify guy, so I just went through and followed um, the Beatles and and uh, Mac Miller should be on there too as another followed artist. But yeah, there we go. But anyways, there we go. We've successfully gotten a user to authorize our app to gather information from their Spotify account about the artists which they follow on Spotify. So we've gotten an authorization code, we've exchanged that for a token, and then we've used that token in subsequent requests to actually get the followed artists here. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, before we tie everything up and, and have a few closing comments here, let's get this working at the interface level. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make this dynamic because the token that we get is going to be specific to each user that authorizes our app, right? So we'll leave that as private or unchecked private there. And we'll also do the same for this code right here. So we're going to use dynamic values for this code. Let's rename that to code. There we go. We'll say not private. Redirect URI will be the same. Grant type will be the same. This will be the same as well. Um, and that looks good. So what we're gonna do is we'll go to our Spotify page. Let's delete this text element because we don't need it. And we'll center this on the page. I'm really, really, really quickly going to just put a repeating group here. And I think what we get back from this get followed artists is, well, let's go take a look at it. What kind of data do we get back? We get a list of items here, it looks like. Um, so let's say 
get followed artists items is going to, and we'll leave the data source blank here, but it'll be a list of get followed artists items. If any of this stuff is confusing to you, what I'm doing right now, do make sure to go back and watch some of the earlier videos that we did in this series where we were actually taking this data that we're getting back from an API and, and putting it inside of a repeating group. Okay. So let's just say that we're going to display the current cells um, name and maybe the image as well too. So this will be the image of the artist. This will be dynamic. We'll say current cells, images. Um, I don't know. Let's just say first items URL. We'll try that. And I think that it's a one-to-one -one ratio for those images. Let's just say 60 and 60. Anyways, um, that looks good. So what we'll do is when this is clicked, Let's think about this. We're navigating to this page right here. That looks good. Why don't we do this? Why don't we say when a certain condition is true, we'll say when um, get data from page URL code is not empty. So when that code parameter is there, we will make an API request. Let's go back to our plugins here. And the request that we want to make, because again, remember what we're doing right now, we're exchanging that code for a token. So what we want to do is we want to say, all we need is that code parameter. So we're just going to say exchange code for token. The code that we're going to get in this case is going to be get data from page URL parameter is going to be called code that should be everything that we need here and then step one here is going to return that access token for us that we can use to get the followed artists so why don't we say in step two um, get followed artists we have this authorization header so why don't we say bearer and then insert dynamic data the result of step one's access token okay um, and then let, let's not end that there. What we want to do after that is we want to take that list that we're getting back from step two. We want to display it in a repeating group. Um, we're just going to say the result of step two artists. There we go. So hopefully, if we've set everything up right, we can do this in one attempt here once I get redirected. So there we go, I click agree, connect with Spotify, and there we have the Beatles and Mac Miller, right? So there's a lot more to say about this, but th there's one really important point that I wanna make here. Everything that we just did, going through this whole manual process for OAuth 2, is what the Bubble API connector attempts to do for you with some of these authentication methods that you select here. So for example, if I select OAuth to user agent flow, you can see that we're being asked for by the bubble API connector, we're being asked for a lot of fields that we saw when going through the Spotify documentation, right? Scope, token name, um, the if authentication goes in the header, Right now, what does this mean? Presumably, if authentication goes in the header, what we're talking about here is for subsequent API requests that I'm making. Once we get back that actual token, does that token go in the header? Right? Um, we can see if the token is returned to us as a query string. Basically, what Bubble is trying to do with this OAuth2 user agent flow here is that entire dance that we just set up manually. And the reason we did it manually is just for the sake of learning. I mean, sometimes you might want to set it up yourself manually, but if you can use the Bubble API connector, just generally speaking, you, you should, because Bubble handles all of this stuff for you and takes care of all of that security stuff like that you don't want to have to deal with, like thinking about where to store an access token or refresh token and all of that stuff, which can be kind of... Well, you know, it's just another thing that you have to worry about. Um, 
So if you can set up your API connection using this authentication method inside of the API connector, I definitely would. And the reason I wanted to do all of this stuff manually is just to kind of show you what Bubble's doing behind the scenes for us. Another thing to mention here is that this OAuth2 user agent flow in particular um, deals with users of our application. So if I, for example, all I did was I just switched the authentication method here to OAuth2 user agent flow. If I were to go to my app now and put a new button on the page, what I could do is because I have that um, API connection or that, that authentication method selected is I could say sign up slash login with a social network and you'll see that API Spotify is there. So that's another nuance to this is that even though we've gotten the user to authorize their um, Spotify accounts in this example, they're not actually logging in with Spotify and being created as a user inside of our application. When we actually use this sign up slash login with a social network, Bubble's actually creating a user inside of our database that we can see if we go to the database, right? And so that's a little bit of a nuance there. If you do need to, if you do want to allow users to sign in with your app, to sign in with Spotify or, or whatever it is, um, you will need to use that OAuth2 user agent flow or any of the other the plugins that um, exist in the marketplace for that. And so I hope you found this helpful. Um, if it was confusing, don't worry. Um, this stuff, I think, just takes a long time to figure out and, and only really becomes clearer once you, you practice it and, and get lots of experience yourself in the wild trying to connect with whatever APIs you're trying to connect with. Even when I was um, preparing for this, I mean, I've mentioned this a few times, even when I was preparing for this video, I screwed up a number of things with going through the Spotify documentation. So um, that's kind of just par for the course when it comes to dealing with APIs is you're going to spend a lot of time reading through documentation, banging your head against the wall, trying to figure out exactly what it is that this other service wants you to do or what parameters they want you to pass or how they want you to pass that data to their servers and all of that fun stuff. So don't be discouraged. Keep moving forward. And um, yeah, I hope you found this useful. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.